Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be playing as a criminal in Pokemon Outlaw version, a game where you journey through a messed up and corrupted version of the Kanto region. But on our way, we'll be meeting evil people, finding secret mysteries, and taking on a dangerous final boss. So stay tuned and let's get started with our journey. We kick off in the slums of Pallet Town. Yes, apparently we're not even lucky enough to have a house, but after leaving the slums, we go and talk to Professor Oak, who seems to be dealing some sketchy, illicit things. Nonetheless, we get to choose between one of these starters. We got Pikachu as an option. We even have a Vulpix as an option here as well, but the Sandshrew is also there as an option. However, we go for Pikachu because it only makes the most amount of sense. So after choosing our starter Pokemon, we actually actually have to battle Professor Oak's female aide, and this is because she's gonna report him to the police for doing some sketchy stuff. But it doesn't take long after our Thundershocks to defeat her little Rattata, and we have ourselves our actually first victory in this whole game. Then we head out towards Viridian Forest, but before we can get there, this police officer wants to make our life difficult, and so he challenges us, but it's not that big of a deal, we end up defeating him. And this person also tells me that they pretty much stole a bunch of goods from the Pokemon, and though they give us a free potion. Then we actually make it to the Pokemon itself, where it turns out some of the stuff that was supposed to be given to Professor Oak was actually stolen by some of the thugs in the slums. So our job is to go to the slums and make sure we get that stuff back. And so now that we're down in the slums, we got to take out these two thugs who are stopping us because, well, they are the ones who are going to be protecting this lad over here who stole the parcel. So first up is this man who has himself a matchup. We easily thundershock our way through that, which is not a problem whatsoever for us, of course. After defeating him, there is another thug we got to deal with. It's Q-Ball Mike here with his Rattata. After defeating his Rattata and Mankey, then we get the parcel back from their boss right here who stole it from the Pokemart guy because he just wanted to do it for fun, I guess. Either way, once we got it, we returned back to Oak, given the parcel, and now we receive ourselves Pokeballs as well as a Pokedex. But guess what? His grandson, Ledouche, is also there and he actually receives the Pokedex and Pokeballs as well. And then also apparently, uh, well, uh, Professor Oak is an asshole, so we get a free map from his granddaughter. Nonetheless, we go out looking for some Pokemon. We find ourselves a Mankey that we capture and add to our team. And yes, it's our first Pokemon that's going to be joining us. Unluckily enough, I couldn't find a Nidoran, but that's besides the point. And along the way, we also run into Ledouche, aka the grandson of Professor Oak, aka Blue. But we take him on and he seemingly wants to uh, kill us for some reason. He doesn't really like us. So we have to battle him and defeat his team of three starter Pokemon, which is bloody ridiculous. But we end up doing it. It's not a problem whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. Easy win, easy dub. Let's move on to the Viridian Forest, which actually isn't there anymore. Turns out the Viridian Forest was kind of uh, deleted. And now instead, Blue or Douche has actually hired a bunch of bug catcher assassins. Yes, bug catcher assassins to kill us. But these guys are not that difficult. We easily dispatch of every single one of them. And I really mean every single one of them. There's so freaking many. We take them all out. They all just use Metapods and Weedles and stuff. And I mean, they're pretty goofy. I'm not even gonna lie. After defeating all of them, we get to Pewter City, ladies and gentlemen. Here, there seems to be a giant uh, club of sorts where people are doing illicit things, uh, aka using certain uh, stuff they shouldn't be using, and also uh, doing stuff that, again, they should not be doing. Man, Pokemon ROM hacks are really strange. Either way, we talk to some of the people there, and then it's time to go and take on the Pewter City Gym. Also, you guys should definitely subscribe if you want to see more Pokemon ROM hacks and weird gameplay. But before we can even take on the gym, we run into Leaf, oddly enough, and Leaf thinks we are cute and wants to battle us, so that's exactly what we do. We take on Leaf, of all people, who uses a Ponita that is easily defeated by us, which is not a problem whatsoever. Monkey does get kind of destroyed by it, but nonetheless, easy win for us, and then it's finally time to take on the Pewter City Gym. And it turns out that there are no trainers in the gym anymore. It turns out Brock was actually inappropriately touching some people, and he went to prison for this, hence why nobody wants to be around him anymore. So we gotta battle him, and that's exactly what we do. First up, Monkey gets totally destroyed, then we use Iron Tail on Pikachu, which destroys the Geodude, and Iron Tail also on the Onyx. It's easy peasy, and ladies and gentlemen, our first gym badge is already in the bag. Now that we have the gym badge, we can now head towards where Mount Moon should be, but along the way, we run into one of our lads and this lad basically gives us some free running shoes. However, it does say something interesting on the shoes that they belong to CJ and that if you steal them, he will kill you. He will find you and kill you. So, hey, CJ, I'm sorry, man, but I stole your shoes. It is what it is, man. It sucks to be you. So we head on to Mount Moon, battle a bunch of people along the way and make our way closer to Cerulean City. However, Mount Moon has actually been pretty much deleted and closed up from this game. So instead we have to go just a straight path. And along the way, we run into a literal war between the Team Rocket Squad as well as the police. They're actually having a literal conflict. So we jump in, defeat a few of them and have ourselves a good old time just getting ourselves some free experience points as well as getting Mega Kick and Mega Punch for our boy Monkey. So once we've done that, we get to Cerulean City. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take on the gym as well as 
our rival battle again. Which of these four Pokemon rivals do you think is the best one and the worst one? Let me know in the comment section down below by typing out which one you think is the worst or the best. Let me know. Now, before taking on the gym, we go to the slums to just see what's going on down there, which turns out to be a bunch of weird stuff. This guy has himself a Ghastly, which we defeat. And this dude is uh, offering services from his girls, which uh, you can only assume what that might mean. Then this guy right here says that he's Misty's new lover. So we make sure to put him in his place by mega kicking the shit out of his horsey, which is exactly what we do. And then thunderbolting his shelter and he is defeated. Now, before taking on the gym itself, we're going to be taking on Leaf here. So yes, Leaf pretty much thinks we are a nice and amazing guy. Actually, Leaf really likes us, which is a little bit strange. I'm not going to lie. Keeps calling us a nice guy. Either way, her Pidgeotto gets a Mega Punch to the face, which defeats it. Then there is a Chikorita, which we also Mega Punch as well. And that thing, same way, gets deleted. Leading up next is a Zigzagoon as well as a Ponita. And those two get destroyed by Pikachu using Thunderbolt. And so we defeated her. And then she actually offers us a nice little gift, which is a free rare candy as a, something that you give to friends, which, hey, you know what? I appreciate that. It's not bad. Thank you very much. Either way, now we can go and take on Misty for real and that's exactly what we do so let's try our best she thinks we are a perv apparently as we were checking her out which isn't true that's a lie and i will claim, you know i will claim that in court too either way star you is first defeated then we have star me which we thunderbolt and we get the one hit ko we are a bit over leveled in it which is of course going to be the reason as to us having the advantage in this case but we get the cascade badge and she threatens that her boyfriend will pretty much destroy us if we even consider telling him that we got the gym badge then we go over to nugget bridge and this guy tells us that hey you know what you get a free nugget but he wants to eat our Pokemon. He literally wants to eat our Pokemon, but we don't let him, and instead we take him on. We destroy his Hoot Hoot, and we also destroy his Sentret, leaving him in awe at our amazing power. So, ladies and gentlemen, we made it through a big part of the game. We catch ourselves an Oddish and name it Angui, because it is very Angui, and then we also capture ourselves another Pokemon. We capture ourselves a little Grimer, and we nickname it simply nuts i mean what else would i name it come on it's it's a grimer so yeah we got ourselves another pokemon on the team now ladies and gentlemen we go talk to bill he gives us the ssn ticket and we can make our way down to vermilion city along the way this guy apologizes for being such a crude ruffian and then we make our way all our way to vermilion where it's time to go on to the ssn here we explore a little bit do a little bit of battling turns out most people here seem to want to kill us but then finally it's time to take on le douche aka blue so we take on his team which is disgusting by the way and so it's time to take him on and of of course, as you guys know, he kicks off with a Kadabra here. He has a Charmeleon as well, but we Thundershock our way through all of those. Same thing for the Ivysaur and the War Turtle. We destroy him with Monkey and, of course, our boy Pikachu. And so we defeated him. And now we talk to the captain who says that we need to punch him if we want to earn the right to get a uh, cut, which is exactly what we do. So we literally slug the shit out of the captain. And uh, wow, he actually enjoys it. He enjoys the pain. And because of that, we get cut. And now that means we can leave the SSN and go and take on the gym, which is exactly what we do. Inside, of course, we run into Lieutenant Surge, who keeps talking about the war and just kind of freaking out and not wanting us to go into war as well for some reason. We take on his Voltorb with, uh, well, Iron Tail. It destroys him. Pikachu gets destroyed by Nuts, and Monkey destroys the Raichu with a Mega Kick. And so we have our fourth gym badge, ladies and gentlemen. And now we can go and take on the next gym as well. And of course, we do receive the ability now to use the move Fly as well, which is kind of odd. We get into Rock Tunnel, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna talk about what happened in Rock Tunnel. Instead, this guy right here is a super creep, and he wants to give us some candy. Instead, we make sure to defeat him, which is not too difficult. But yeah, he promises he wasn't gonna yeet us or anything. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, we now made it to Lavender Town. Turns out the Pokemon Tower is actually just kind of out of function, and that uh, people just bury their Pokemon in the backyard and not anywhere else, but it is besides the point. Now that we've dealt with this area, it's time to go over to Celadon and get ourselves the next gym badge. We quickly check out the slums of Lavender Town as well. Here, it just seems like people are yeeting themselves into a bunch of holes, which is besides the point. Then we go and get ourselves a next Pokemon. And it turns out that we get ourselves a Pidgey named Derek, a Pinsir, and also a Growlithe named Mr. Doggy, because of course, why not? So that means there are three new Pokemon in our team right now as we're heading into Celadon. And once we get to Celadon, it turns out that our boy Monkey actually evolves and also so we run into Douche again, who wants to give us another battle. So we give him the pleasure of taking us on once more. So we battle him. His Kadabra gets one hit KO'd. Execute gets one hit KO'd. Same thing goes for the War Turtle. I mean, our boys are doing all the work. Ivysaur and Charmeleon are the last ones left. Charmeleon gets one hit by the Thundershock. We switch over into Monkey with the Mega Kick, who destroys Ivysaur. And we've defeated him, and he calls us Homeless Trash, which is disgusting. Then we run into a Team Rocket Grunt, which we defeat. This old man is checking out the ladies in the Celadon Gym. 
him, which, I mean, hey, it's his own prerogative. Either way, we got to go and take on the HQ of Team Rocket, which is exactly what we do. We make it all the way through, all the way to Giovanni, which we take on and battle as well. He seems like actually pretty chill dude, but he doesn't really seem cool with us wanting to stop his evil plots. So he does battle us to make sure that we do not get in his way. However, his team is nowhere close to enough good to actually defeat us. So we molish through his whole squad and then it's time to go and take on Erica. For that, we make sure to buy ourselves a Thunderstone to evolve our Pikachu into a Raichu, which is perfect as we do need that extra power on the team. And now we can go and finally take on Erica and her team is going to be uh, something different. Now, first things first, her team consists of mostly just, well, grass type Pokemon. So we're not gonna have too much trouble just sweeping through those. First of all, we're taking on right here, one of her trainers who just has loads of grass types that we sweep through using Ember on our boy, Mr. Doggy, which is our favorite Pokemon of all time. Of course, we love them. But yeah, so we take out that team. Then it's time to take on Erica herself. And again, same thing here. Her team consists of mostly grass type Pokemon. And even in this ROM hack, it's not really that big of a difference in terms of difficulty. So we easily sweep through it. And ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves another win. And that's exactly what happens after we iron tail through that vile bloom. And there it is. We have another gym badge. And now we can go on and take on the next one. And of course, uh, deal with more of the weird people of this region. And there is a lot of weird people in this region. I'm not even going to lie. A good example of this is the Kanto government, which responsibly uses our tax money. And they're very serious. And also, same thing with these guys. They get high salary, tons of perks. And uh, yeah, they just don't really do a good job. They just kind of ask for a lot of taxes and don't really do a lot back for the people. But that's besides the point. I mean, even this guy right here, I mean, what's the deal with him? He's a senior official in the Kanto government. And yes, he admits that his position has made him very, very wealthy. But it's also helped a lot of people in the region. Of course, seriously, he really means it, guys. Definitely believe this sketchy guy working for a government that's being funded by Team Rocket. I mean, it makes total sense, doesn't it? So back in Lavender Town, we talked to the people that work at the <laughs> Mr. Fuji's old, like, center. The special place where Mr. Fuji used to take care of stuff. Well, it turns out the children lied that he was a creeper and he got fired because of that. But this guy hates working here and he gives us a pokey flute he found in his mom's basement that he couldn't sell. So, I mean, hey, it's good enough. That helps us get past the Snorlax and now we can make it all the way down to Koga's gym. But before we can take Koga's gym on, it looks like Leaf, our temporary girlfriend in this game for some reason, which is really weird. I'm not even gonna lie. She is in trouble with the police. They are taking her into custody. So we gotta make sure we save her. This means, ladies and gentlemen, we gotta raid the police station and that's exactly what we do. We get all the way through the police station, take on all the guards that are inside of it and make our way till the end to the final police chief. And his battle is actually one that I thought was gonna be harder, but it turns out that just having Thundershock on a Raichu is more than enough to defeat a bunch of police Pokemon. So that's exactly what we end up doing. We sweep through his team and we save Leaf from this situation. And also in saving her, we can now go and access the gym and continue on our journey. So that's exactly what we do. We quickly heal ourselves up. And before we do anything else, we also do check out this random club right. And I'm going to be honest, uh, this game, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's another one of those. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm just going to tell you to play the game yourself if you want to know what's going on right here. I'm just going to be honest, but it is what it is. Either way, this police officer seems to not be in the best of moods. So we let him just chill and have his drink and you know, unwind. But either way, it's time to take on Koga. And so at Koga's gym, we talk to him and he tells us that he used to be a ninja assassin. Yes, he used to slaughter people hundreds at will and he's not a washed up guy. So we take on his coughing, which is an easily like defeat a Pokemon with Thunderbolt. However, the rest of his team is actually pretty hard. Uh, he's got a Weezing and a Muck as well. Now the Muck ends up being really difficult. We go for Thunderbolt, but it kept using Minimize, which lowers its, you know, just, I mean, pretty much increases its evasiveness, but lowers our accuracy against it. So it's a little bit annoying. However, eventually using Monkey, we do get it. And then there is Weezing left as well. We go for Mega Kick, which does a decent amount of damage and then Mega Punch as well. Eventually we have to switch into Raichu to finish him off and that gives us the victory. So it did require a little bit of work. I'm not going to lie a few heals and stuff here and there, but eventually we do get the gym badge and now we're one step closer to taking on the Pokemon League. Now, earlier, we received some sketchy tea from this one girl who we're giving to this police officer who's going to be drinking it to let us through into Saffron City, which is exactly what he does. So now that we're in Saffron City, before we go and do anything else, we want to make sure we get ourselves a free Pokemon, aka Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee. So we defeat the Dojo, which was not really that easy. It was Mojo Jojo, if you want to ask me. But either way, after defeating that, we get ourselves a free Hitmonlee that, of course, we named Bruce because, hey, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. But either way, now it's time to take on the Saffron HQ, which is going to be a doozy. 
So inside of the, well, Saffron HQ, we make our way around, we puzzle through the whole place, and eventually we make it all the way to, uh, well, instead of battling Douche, we're actually battling Leaf. Yes, we have to battle Leaf in this case, which uh, is going to be a very difficult battle if we have to go off of old battles. So this one's going to be a hard one. Now, for some reason, she still assumes we are her boyfriend, which is really, really weird. And for some reason, that makes her excited. I don't know, either way. But she likes to battle us. So we have to do, do exactly that. We have to battle Leaf and let's see how this goes. So we take her on. Her Pidgeot is, of course, the easiest one as we do have Thunderbolt on Raichu. So that's out of the way right away. We are paralyzed, however, which is annoying. Lanoon is up next. We Thunderbolt that too, leaving a few more Pokemon like Meganium. Here in this case, we metal our way through it and do use a few heals. Eventually, luckily enough, after it heals itself multiple times, we get it. Gardevoir is two hits with the Thunderbolt and leaving the final two Pokemon pretty much being the Rapidash in this case, which is not that big of a deal to defeat. And so, yeah, we are pretty much done with with that, we defeated Leaf, and next up, we, uh, well, she just tells us we're a good boy. We talk to this guy who thinks that we're gonna attack him, so he gives us a free Skarmory that we call Broski, because why not? But, uh, yeah, he just thought we were gonna be mean against him, which we weren't. Then we run into Giovanni, who just says, what's up, man? He wants to just, you know, tell us about these business plans he has with Silphco and how he's gonna do great things. And it turns out that we are gonna be costing him a million dollar deal. His Persian is easy, his Kangaskhan is also pretty easy, about two hits with the Thunderbolt, and then it is pretty much done. Of course, the Paralyzed comes in as well to help us out, as per usual. Rhydon is defeated with the help of Monkey using some moves, as well as Raichu with the Iron Tail, as per usual. And then Iron Tail finishes also off the Nido King. Uh, he leaves it at just literally one HP here, which gets me a little bit freaked out because we are low on HP at this point. So I'm a little bit scared. However, it does work out with level 51 as well on Raichu. And uh, yeah, he lost and we cost him a million dollar deal. And guess what? This even pissed off the president. He called me a worthless bastard and then we wasted a ton of his money. And instead of giving us a Master Ball, which is normally what would happen. And uh, also he's pissed off by the way, because he couldn't get his youngest son a third mansion. That's why he's angry. But either way, so he's pissed off. So he gives us coal. He gives us charcoal, which actually is pretty useful because we can actually give that to our fire type Pokemon, aka Mr. Doggy. So that's going to be useful to us. Also, this lady's angry because, well, she's not going to get a salary boost because of this deal falling through with Team Rocket. But either way, I digress. Not my problem. Time to go take on Sabrina, which is exactly what we do. We make it through her puzzle very quickly. Then she talks about some, uh, really weird stuff before we defeat her in a battle as well. So here we go. So we take her on. The Kadabra is a one-hit KO with Thunderbolt. Same thing goes for the Mr. Rhyme. Uh, Mr. Mime, sorry. Mr. Rhyme or Mime. Either way, he is a two-hit with two Thunderbolts. Then we have a Venomoth. Same thing here. About two hits. The Hyper Potion does come in, which is a little bit annoying, but eventually we do get it, leaving the Kadabra, Alakazam, uh, the only ones to remain in this case. And Alakazam is a two-hit as well. And there it is. And again, we defeat her, get ourselves a new gym badge. But also, again, she's talking about some really weird stuff at the end here. Uh, I don't know what's up with these characters, man. They're all really, really sketchy. Now, we need to get to Cinnabar Island, so I catch myself a Nidoran because I've been wanting to have a Nido King this whole time. So we make sure to get it into our team. And guess what? We evolve it all the way into a Nido King. So that is perfect. We fly to Pallet Town and surf all the way down to Cinnabar Island, where it's time to enter the party mansion? Yeah, apparently this is not really the usual mansion we're used to. Instead, it's a party mansion, and uh, yeah, there is uh, sketchy stuff going on, and oh god, no, not again, man. This is just flashbacks to playing Pokemon Cops, dude. This is the police game all over again. Why? Why does this keep happening? Either way, ladies and gentlemen, we go through the mansion looking for the card key. Eventually, we find a key for the Pokemon Gym, and so we can now go and take on Blaine and the Cinnabar Gym. Now, at Blaine's gym, we get to do a quiz here that asks us if we have ever cried ourselves to sleep. And this is a way to skip the trainers. And, uh, well, you know, we're going to be answering yes on that one. Of course we have. Everybody has. Either way, it's time to take on Blaine's. And then we look at this photo that says it's a photo of Blaine and Mr. Fuji, two horrible men. Shame on them both. Shame on them. Uh, really strange. Either way, it's time to take on the Cinnabar gym leader, Blaine's himself. And, uh, yeah, he's going to be destroying us with his fire Pokemon. At least that's what he thinks he will do. Uh, he gave the gym badge for a million bucks to Douche, a.k.a well, blue. And so it's time to take him on. We surf against his Flareon here using Biggest Nut. However, that doesn't really work in our favor. So we go into Raichu. Thunderbolt goes in. It's more than enough to do quite a lot of damage. Next up is Magmar. Same thing here. Thunderbolt. We actually even get the Paralyze. We do take a lot of damage and get the Burn, which is annoying. He Hyper Potions, but that's not the end of the world. We go for another 
Thunderbolt, he goes for another Hyper Potion, but eventually we do defeat that Pokemon as well. Next up, we switch into Monkey, because Monkey just seems to be more useful in this case against Rapidash, except he uses Bounce, I think, which just one hit KOs us, which is really annoying. So we try to switch into something else. We go here into our boy Nuts, who doesn't do a lot. So we're in a bit of a precarious situation. Broski's up next. He can't really do a lot, so I go for Air Cutter, which can't even hit, because guess what? We're just too low. Our whole team is pretty much getting swept because of this one Rapidash. Luckily, though, we did have Raichu on Retainer, with the Hyper Potion, so we did heal him up, and eventually he's able to also defeat the final Pokemon, Arcanine, giving us our seventh gym badge, meaning there is only one left, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, Viridian. So we're gonna have to head over there to get ourselves the final badge, which is exactly what we do. So inside of the Viridian City Gym, we run into the most unlikely of characters. It turns out that May, yes, May, the May, has been hired as the person to run this gym, which is super strange. I'm not even gonna lie, but yes, she's here from Hoenn to battle us. So we take her on and try to defeat her. First up is her Pelipper, which just goes down to a Thunderbolt, which is not the end of the world. Waylord is next. Same thing here. Thunderbolt is a one hit KO, leaving us in a good position right now. Tropius is next. We go for Iron Tail, which is also a one hit KO. And pretty much Raichu is just doing most of the work right here. Sceptile is next. We missed the Iron Tail this time around. And because it used Screech, it's even more annoying. It also outspeeds us at this point. However, it gets paralyzed after hitting us with Slam, which is perfect. The Iron Tail one hit KOs again, leaving Claydol as the final Pokemon, and even here, we do such a ludicrous amount of damage that it doesn't really matter. So this was actually, oddly enough, the easiest gym we had to take on. We now have the Earth Badge, and ladies and gentlemen, we can now take on the Pokemon League. But first, we have to battle someone that we've met a few times before as well. You guys already know who it is. We got to take on Douche because this man just does not want to stop trying to kill us. This man has been after us from day one. And so he's bought himself a great team and he thinks he can defeat us with that. So it's time to battle him. First up is Alakazam, which falls to a Thunderbolt. Next up, though, is going to be an Executor. I didn't switch here, which I really should have to begin with, but I stay in and the Iron Tails are enough with Raichu. I should have switched into Mr. Doggy, but I didn't. However, Venusaur is next. Iron Tail misses a few times. We go into Sleep, which is a little bit problematic as we end up losing our Pokemon here. So we go into Mr. Doggy. We try to get that Flame Wheel or Fire Blast off if, you know, it's just enough to kill him. However, he does destroy us before we can even do that, which is a little bit annoying. We then try to use Nut, who also falls, and eventually we switch into Monkey and go for Cross Chop, which is enough to kill him. Charizard is next, though, and this one, this one's a bit more dangerous, so we have to revive a few Pokemon. And with the help of Raichu being back now, Thunderbolt is easily taken out on Charizard. We then use Thunderbolt, same thing on Snorlax. It doesn't do enough damage, but we do get the static off, and eventually we do get enough Thunderbolts to actually defeat it, and this was the only last Pokemon remaining, which was Blastoise, one Thunderbolt, and it was done. And ladies and gentlemen, Douche was defeated, and he really doesn't think that we can take on the Pokemon League. He says we'll be destroyed and killed by them, but I don't think so. So it's time to go take on the Pokemon League. We quickly dispatch up the Victory Road and make it all the way to the top. But when we enter inside, something is not right. Everybody's just standing around, and it turns out Professor Oak has been killed. Gary, well, douche, has been killed. This random guy has been killed. This dojo dude has been killed. When you talk to this man, he says, holy crap, dude. He killed them all. Lance killed them all. He killed the Elite Four. He destroyed Professor Oak and the Challengers. Everybody, even the Elite Four members, have all been destroyed by Lance. Nobody is left alive. What is going on? Well, guess what? These ninja assassins, ladies and gentlemen, these death ninjas, ninja deaths, I don't even know what you want to call it. But either way, these guys are the reason for this happening. And so we have to battle them to stop them in their way and also to stop Lance. So first up is the ninja son with his Zangus that we easily defeat. Next up in his team is going to be a Makago. Again, we're using the advantage of our Raichu being so strong here and Thunderbolt is just really good against most of his team. We switch into Broski against a Scyther. Of course, the type advantage here does come in handy with the air cutter and stuff. He does use full restore, which is a little bit annoying. And also remember, we do have Broski with the spikes and a few other battles, we will be using that to our advantage. Gengar is defeated with the Thunderbolt and the Ninjask is also defeated with Broski in this case as well. So that was the first person and the ninja son. However, next up is the ninja daughter, and her team is a little bit more difficult, a little bit harder to defeat. Ursaring is up first. We go and make sure we use spikes first of all to make sure we are set up really well. Ursaring is then defeated by Biggest Nut, our, well, Nido King. We did lose a few Pokemon along the way here. Camera up next up is gets one hit with our Surf here from Biggest Nut, and then there is a Swamp Bird. In this case, we try to use Cross Chop on 
our boy Monkey, which is enough to kill him. And then there is a Scizor. Against Scizor, we use our boy Mr. Doggy with the Fire Blast, and that also takes him out, leaving Heracross as her final Pokemon, and we defeat it. And now she can feast on our... Well, I guess flesh is kind of what she wanted to do, which is, again, really, really weird. So we take on her dad, her father, the final person in this ninja squad, and he's got himself a Sharpedo. We go for, of course, the setup of the spikes first and foremost. Then we switch into Raichu to make sure we can get the Thunderbolts off to defeat the Sharpedo in no time, which is exactly what we do. Next up is the Tyranitar. We use Earthquake, and luckily we do get him here. We are left on very low HP, but we use our boy Mr. Doggy to defeat the Steelix, as well as his, well, I guess Metagross in this case, and we've defeated the Ninja Master. Master, leaving only really one guy left here in this case, and it's going to be none else than guess what? Himself, Lance, the man who just casually decided to yeet all of his teammates and all of his friends for whatever reason. I don't even know why the deal, you know, why this all happened. It is what it is, though. However, we got to battle him, and he, of course, has a dragon team, as we already know, and he sees us as unworthy. So, will we be able to defeat him? First up, we set up spikes against his Gyarados in this case. We're just going to be needing those later on. So he goes to Surf. We do a little bit of damage with Air Cutter, and then we switch into, of course, Raichu to make sure that we get the easy win. Salamence is up next, and we stay in with Raichu because we can keep Thunderbolting. We're starting to run out of our Thunderbolts. We do have Max Elixir, so we should be fine. However, the Hyper Beam comes in. We do get the Thunderbolt off. It's done. Dragonair is next. In this case, we do a little bit of damage, but we have to switch into Biggest Nut to finish it off with the Mega Horn. Then there is the Aerodactyl. And this one was uh, really hard. Uh, we ended up having to use Nut, and eventually, with some Sludge Bombs here and there, and him having to recharge after the Hyper Beam, we do get that win, leaving only Dragonite left at the end. And of course, with a Quick Attack, we do get him right at the end there. But it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that he was not the one doing this. He was not the one that caused this. He was forced to do this by someone else. Ladies and gentlemen, he wasn't the one who wanted to kill the Elite Four. It was somebody else that was pulling the strings all along. Somebody in the shadows. And it was this guy right here. He says, Ruffled, I am Cole Johnson, a.k.a. CJ. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who this is, this is the guy who we stole shoes from. However, it does say something interesting on the shoes, that they belong to CJ, and that if you steal them, he will kill you. You will Earlier in the game, yes. Remember me? You stole my running shoes, fool. Yes, this is the same CJ. If you guys remember earlier in the game, CJ was the guy whose shoes we got, whose running shoes we got back in Pewter City from our friend. And uh, it turns out that they belong to this guy, CJ, right here. And CJ, literally, this messed with him so much that he decided to take control of all of the Kanto region, Silphco, everything. And not just that, he stole a bunch of Master Balls and he caught himself a Suicune. On top of that, not just Suicune, he caught himself a bunch of legendary and mythical Pokemon. And ladies and gentlemen, this battle is way too difficult. We defeat the Suicune, but he has a freaking Mew. What am I supposed to do against this thing? I can't do anything. And ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much where our journey ends. We end up losing to him because we just cannot defeat this team. He has so many more Pokemon that I do not know about, but I would recommend you guys to go check out the game yourself. Give it a try, play it, and see what you guys think about it. And thank you all for watching. That's going to be the end of the video. I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace out and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.